What's up everyone, it is Julian here from theartoffitnessandlife.com where the mission is to create generational health and wealth. And I'm sitting here waiting for my Uber and I've just been doing some studying today and you know, I, this thing comes to mind every so often and sometimes when I'm on different um, shows and doing interviews, um, this question's asked as well. And it's about aging, of course, but it's specifically, what are some key factors when it comes to aging? And typically, some of the common answers that, some, that people probably would go to initially is it's exercising, getting enough activity in every week, it's getting enough sleep in every week, it's eating a nutritious diet, and it's mitigating stress. All those things are critical, absolutely. But one thing that they forget to mention oftentimes, and if you look at the blue zones, and blue zones are a few regions in the world that has some of the longest living people. And one thing that you'll notice, besides all those things that I mentioned in terms of movement, sleep, and uh, nutrition, those people have, I believe the Japanese call it ikagi. Pardon me, but my Japanese is not that good right now. So I think I said that correctly. And another way to say this is your why, your mission, um, a meaningful existence, whichever word you want to use, but they all pretty much mean the same thing. And the reason why I say this is because if you look at a lot of presidents, presidents typically live a pretty long life. And the thing is, presidents, you know, during their terms in office, they live a pretty stressful life during that time. You know, I mean, look at Obama and how he aged. He came in with jet black hair and he left with, you know, with all gray silver hair. And and you can look at other presidents through the line of how they look when they came in compared to how they look after their terms. And But a lot of these presidents, and you can even look at a lot of different businessmen as well, live a very long life despite being you know, in high stressful situations day in and day out. And one reason is because they have a meaningful existence. They have a rhyme and reason for why they get up and do what they do each and every single day. You know, for presidents, you know, we'll stay on this subject. You know, I think about after they leave the office, what's next? And that's the critical question that you ask yourself, what is next? And a lot of presidents start to do philanthropic work or some of them even go back in business. And I think about this with entrepreneurs as well. They have their first company, that company takes off, they sell it or it gets acquired. They're a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. And so the game has changed for them. And sometimes people lose that, that initial hunger that they had and they start to just decline after that. And the same thing happens in fitness someone. You know, I remember a lot of times when early on in the fitness journey, in my health journey, with friends, we will be coming up. And we just, and once we hit that milestone that we thought that we wanted, some of us stopped. Whereas others, we kept going because we asked the most important question. And that's what I want to leave you with here today is asking the most important question and that is what's next how good can I get and because the goal that you have right now whether it's a monetary goal relationship goal or you know a health goal you'll most likely accomplish that thing and then you'll realize once you get to that end destination that it feels good in that moment but over a while you'll get used to it and um, it's probably not the best association, but there's a word you can call it hedonic adaptation. And you get used to a certain lifestyle or a certain level of living, a certain, you get accustomed to certain things. And so when you have this goal of, I lost 20 pounds, I'm in super fantastic shape now, what's next? And this is critical because a lot of times the people who are on this proverbial seesaw with their health and fitness where a few months they're doing really good, they're kicking ass with it, and then the next three months they are downhill, not doing as well. A big reason for that is that they do not have what's next on the horizon for them. They have that. And the reason why you want what's next is because if you leave a void, something is inevitably going to fill that void. It is not going to stay empty in a vacuum. And oftentimes, what stays empty 
is an old habit that comes in there and fills that spot. So that's why you really ask the question, what's next? And then how good can I get? Because the journey, the growth, the evolution, it never stops. And this all ties into a meaningful existence. Why do you do what you do? And I know you hear this all the time. What's my why? What's my why? Blah, 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 blah. I don't need you to get that, that, that big and grandiose. You don't have to. I want you to simply think about this today. What's a quest? What is something that you want to do that maybe you're not doing right now? What's a goal that you have right now that would just really excite the hell out of you? Is it a travel goal? Is it a fitness goal? Is it a performance goal? Is it running a marathon, a half marathon, a 10K? Is it getting a six pack? Is it quitting your job, starting a business? Is it, you know, doubling that portfolio? I don't know what it is. It could be so many things. Whatever it is, it's the thing that fuels you. We need that meaningful existence because when we don't have that meaningful existence throughout the day, that gives us that rhyme and reason for doing what we do. And oftentimes, it's not that fun. The process is not fun, but we do it because I think that we're going after that quest, that destiny that we feel is meaningful to us. And we have to connect to that. We have to be conscious of that because if we're not conscious of that, that's when other things come in, other not so good things, other temptations, other things that are not as healthy, not as productive. So we have a choice. But anti-aging, longevity, performance, all the biohacks, all the wearables, all the blood testing, DNA tests, all these things that are at our disposal right now, all these things are for naught. If you do not have a meaningful existence and a rhyme and reason for why you do what you do and get out of bed each and every morning. So stay awesome, be limitless, and as always, never stop upgrading. Peace.